We are here at SEC BD Days 2023, and the guy, Hendon Hooker here, of course, with Bush's Baked Beans. Uh, Hendon, first of all, is this a unique experience coming back after last year having the suit and the tie on and answering a lot of questions? You still got the shoes going, but how is this for you now that you're on the other side of your college career? It's fun. It's fun. Uh, I remember talking to, to Joe Milton a couple of days ago, and he was like, what are you going to wear? I'm like, I don't have to wear the suit this year, bro. So, um, you know, it was just exciting to come back and, and see a lot of familiar faces. When you first got to Knoxville, obviously the tailgating scene, Virginia Tech's got a great tailgating scene, but Knoxville's a little bit better. We can all admit that. Uh, I'm a big chili guy. I make big pots of chili during the fall, obviously with Bush's Baked Beans. Uh, when you got to Knoxville, what was the like the, the the vibe and the sense of what SEC football was all like? And I know, again, you and Joe were battling for a position there, but what was that like when you got to the SEC? Um, it, was, it was amazing just to hear the stories of, you know, what took place in Knoxville when there were big-time games and big-time wins. Um, and, and then just everyone in the locker room telling me how amazing it was to play in Neyland. So I was very excited, um, you know, to actually get in there. Even the first game, we played Bowling Green. It was a Thursday night game. Uh, the atmosphere was just amazing. Um, and being able to step on the field and everyone just roaring at, uh, in the stadium, it was, it was cool. All right, so you're watching games this year, SEC games, you get Saturdays off. I tell people in the NFL all the time that for some reason don't watch college football. I don't understand. You're going to be watching ball on Saturdays. How, how are you preparing? What's the tailgate like at the, at the Hooker household? Yeah, so, um, you know, we have our, our secret recipe for the Bushes Baked Beans. Um, definitely going to hop, hop on the grill, maybe some chicken, of course, hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, traditional. Um, and, and for sure, you know, some type of fruity drinks are going to be, are going to be there. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to see my balls go out there and, and put on a show. Take us through Joe's evolution because this is a guy who's been through a lot in his career. Michigan comes with you guys. You guys battle for the job. You eventually take over, of course. I think people this week are going to really get to know him a little bit. He's an extraordinary dude, huge arm. We know that stuff. But what do people not know about Joe Milton, and what has he learned from, from you and Hype over the last two years that makes him ready for this season? Yeah, uh, Joe is very personable. Uh, brings great energy and, and his football IQ is very high as well. So um, him just coming into the locker room and taking over and um, you know, displaying his leadership, even when he wasn't the starter, he still displayed his leadership and trying to get his troops, you know, go in the right direction. When he's on the field, he's going to make big time plays. And as we all know, he has a big time arm. So um, you know, I'm excited to see him, uh, you know, continue to stack days. Uh, we both used to build off of each other, compete at a high level on the field and off the field. We're both just picking each other's brains. I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a good sit down uh, this evening. Joe's a cook as well, so we, he makes his own spaghetti. So um, we call it Joe Sketty. If you ask him about Joe Sketty, he's going to laugh. But uh, I'm expecting to have, have, some, have some good plates this evening. I appreciate the inside intel there. Now, the question is, can you put beans in Joe Sketty? Is that, is that possible? No, no. No beans on the Joe Sketty. So. All right, so who, what, what do you cook? I, I mean, obviously you got you t the chicken, the hot dogs, and the tailgate, and I hear all that. But it, So you guys, do you learn from him on how to cook, or is that? Uh, I think the only, the only dish that I, I took from Joe was the dirty rice. He makes the dirty rice. So um, Fourth of July, we cooked uh, while we were out of town. He hopped on the grill. He took everything on the grill. I took everything in the kitchen, beans, um, pasta salad, uh, dirty rice, uh, corn. And put the corn on the grill, so you know, it was it was a good spread. Hey, well, you're down, that you learned all that, of course, down when you win by three touchdowns in, in Baton Rouge. That's where you learn all the dirty rice. Um, let me ask you about Josh Heupel. Heupel is a guy that I find fascinating. That he steps into the job and immediately, like his communication style, his leadership, it it landed with you. I talked to Cedric Tillman last year about this, and he said he talks with us every day and gets to know us every day, and that makes makes such a big difference. In your words, what is it about Josh Heupel that makes him? so good at landing and connecting with players and getting you guys motivated? I think just how much he cares. Um, like I was just, I just shot a, a, a quick scene and he got a glimpse of it and he shot me a text. Like He's like, you look good, man. I can't wait to see you on the field again. So um, just him being so personable and bringing great energy every day. He doesn't want anything but the best for us. Um, if he sees something out of line, he's going to call it. And, and, you know, we appreciate him for that. He's going to be the same guy every single day. Um, He's going to love on you. He's going to get on you when you when you need to be got on to. Um, and, and then his football IQ is immaculate. You know, you don't want to do anything but be around him and learn. Uh, so day in and day out, he's teaching us new things and teaching us why we're doing those things. Can you explain to the non-expert uh, schematically why his offense is so productive? Mm -hmm. Because he lets the quarterback be a quarterback and, and have fun 
um, and, and play with freedom. Um, he puts the trust in you, and he knows that your preparation is going to is going to have you ready for the game time situation. Practice is 10 times harder um, as far as situational work. Um, and, and a lot of people talk about that, the game winning drive against Alabama, but we were doing that almost every single day in practice. Imagine being backed up on the goal line and trying to um, go score the ball um, in practice, and then we get in the game, it's 10 times easier. I know you guys had the bushes at the draft party too. I want to ask you about that, but quickly on Alabama, I can't let you go without asking about that. What is like the first thing that you guys say to each other? You get into the locker room, the cigars are being passed out, hypo celebrating, you guys are going nuts. Like, what is the exact thing you guys are telling each other? Yeah. So what's crazy is I ran straight to my parents, thinking that they were going to be there. My family was going to be there. My dad, sister, and some of my friends hopped over the the fence and ran on the field. And my mom was the only one there. I'm like, where's everyone at? So I was the first one in the locker room. I was like, man, I got in here a little too early. But um, I remember just I remember just dapping everybody up. And uh, they, were, they were saying, I told you, I told you. So there was a lot of I told you going on. There was a lot of cell phone messages in the state of Tennessee that night for a long, long time. So quickly, you got you had Bushes all at the, at the draft party. Explain what's that like when you, when you hear your name and you get the call and, like, you, you, know, you know the whole thing's actually coming true. Yeah, um, you know, I told my my family that I wasn't gonna cry, and I didn't because I I knew that you know I deserved to uh, get my name called, and the work that I put in was gonna put me there. So this is just a stepping stone. I think I'll probably shed a tear after you know first game and and um, you know get my feet wet on the field and, and make some plays. Did you have a welcome to the SEC moment? I, ACC football is very good. Virginia Tech is very good. I'm not trying to, to knock on them. But, like, did you have a moment where you just said, oh, this is a little different? Because you obviously are about to go into camp, and everybody has that welcome to the NFL moment. Did you have one of those in the SEC, and how are you prepared for that in the NFL? Yeah, I think um, our first practice, I don't, I don't know if it would be a welcome to SEC. I think it was a welcome to Hendon Hooker world type of thing. when Because um, all the guys were like, well, I mean, you played in the ACC. Like, that's cool, but. We, we just watch SEC football. I'm like, oh, okay. So from leading guys off the field uh, to then at first spring practice, one time I scrambled out of the pocket and made two linebackers like touch the ground and broke their ankles. And they were like, okay, you can you can really play football, Hendon. And I'm like, oh, thanks, guys. I, I hope that we can win some games together. It's the other way around. It was, it was I, I can do this. Yeah, I, can, I can do It was kind of a um, I have to prove myself type of thing. But – um, you know, I wouldn't want to be in any other conference. The best play here in the SEC, and uh, they will continue to. So my, my six-year-old daughter shamed me into taking her to the Vanderbilt-Tennessee game. She was so disappointed that we weren't going, and I, you know, it was a rainy night here. It was cold, and my six-year-old looks at me, and she gives me a, makes a noise that I've never heard. My wife looks at me and goes, man, you better, you better solve that problem. So we get across town. We go over there, and, and obviously a, a huge game, but you've got to watch it. You've got to watch that game. You've got to watch Clemson as well. Um, a lot of players don't do what you did, which is stay there, be with the team. What, what were you saying to Joe? What were you saying to the team? What was the thought process behind making that decision to, to, to be there every, every moment? Yeah, um, you know, I really just didn't want to be separated from my teammates. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to play in the bowl game, and that would have to be in California a majority of the bowl prep. And bowl prep is like my favorite time of the year because it's good on good, and you're scrimmaging every day. Um, and it's just a lot of competitive nature and a lot of testosterone going on in the facility. Um, just itching, itching at the bit to uh, you know play another team. So um, not being able to be there, not being able to welcome in the the, the incoming freshman with little Nico and um, you know a lot of his counterparts. Um, but I think that being there and just bringing that energy to the locker room before the game and um, enjoying our, our last regular season win um, it was special. Uh, so obviously. I want some names from you that fans need to hear about that haven't had a lot of reps yet, that haven't got their name out there in the SEC. So give us some names, some of those young guys, a couple of great recruiting classes that Hype's put together. So give us a couple of names that fans need to know. And, and of course, make sure you tell everybody about uh, your beans there. Yeah. So, um, you know, the first, uh, top two, the ones, we call them the ones, um, Dante Thornton, receiver, coming from Oregon, um, left tackle, John Campbell. Uh, he's he's a monster. He's a monster. I'm excited to see him throw some people out of the club, um, coming up here this season. Um, you know, everyone knows Nico, and then um, the two-headed two-headed monsters in the backfield. Uh, well, three-headed monsters actually with um, Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, and uh, Dylan Sampson. Um, you know, I'm excited to see those guys do their thing. Everyone knows Brew McCoy, big time catch. Um, Ramel Keaton, he's updating a new number, so now he's wearing number nine. Uh, you guys got to get used to that one. 
and then uh, Lil Squirrel White, Mr. Electricity, you know, just just super fast. Um, and then uh, Rocket Arm Joe, he's gonna go out there and put on a show. So I'm excited. And and you know, you have, I guess you, maybe you haven't figured this out. You've done mini camp and everything, but like. You're gonna to have to make sure Tennessee is represented in the locker room. And on Saturdays, how are you getting people to come out to, to watch some ball? Yeah, so um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna rock my orange on, on Saturdays for sure. Um, got my Joe Milton jersey, and then uh, you know my Tyler Barron jersey for sure. Thank you, Henry. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you.